What's up, YouTubers? Johnny DIY here. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks and how to do drywall. All the things you're going to need to know. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, so first of all, this is the face of the drywall, the white part. And then the back of it is going to be like a cardboard uh, colored. So now to cut it, we're going to be doing these little spaces up there between the rafters first. So to cut it, you're going to trace out where you're going to cut it, and then you're going to just score the face of it. So either the white side or the purple side. So when you're scoring, you don't have to push really hard. We're actually not going to cut. We're just going to be scoring the line. And then you're just going to take your knife and score it along that. So once it's scored, we should be able to snap it back like that. We're going to take our straight edge, and we're going to come along the back, and we're going to leave a little crease, and we're going to take our straight edge on the paper, and we're just going to run it along the back side. There we go. After you've got it cut, and you've got a rough edge, you can actually use your hand planer, the little sure-form planer, and just... Uh, soften up those edges so it'll go in nice and smooth. So a little tip when you're hanging the uh, upper sheets, you can go ahead and screw in a 2x4 or something across the stud so then when you hoist up the panels you can rest them up onto this. And if you're new to this, go ahead and mark the middle of where your studs are right before you hang the drywall. That way you'll have an easy target of where to put your screws at. And when we're screwing in our drywall, when we get to the tip, we're just going to countersink it. And we're just going to make it dimple. So you shouldn't be able to feel the head at all. But you're not going to go so deep as to where you rip this face because that's going to compromise the strength of the drywall. And you're going to want to put about a screw every foot. Alright, now we're going to take some of our joint compound, aka our mud. Slop it into our hock. Now you're going to go over to all of your uh, screw holes. And we're just going to mud over them like that. Now you can do them one at a time. You can just do it like this. And then take your cutting knife and go up. There we go. So we're just going to do all those just all like right, that. So now we're going to mud the uh, seam. We're just going to do that by getting our uh, six inch knife. I'm just going to run it. You can run it up and down, side to side. We're just going to fill in the, the seam and give a nice bed of mud for our tape. Now the edges of the drywall are tapered, so it gives you a nice groove to put the mud into. Alright, so now we're going to take our regular old drywall paper tape, uh, it's already pre-creased, and we're going to start laying it across. Uh, we're going to do it with the crease in. So we're just going to start it over. Roll it across, and we're just going to rip, and we're just going to lay it, lay it in there. Just You can just tack it in place, it's fine. And we're going to take our knife and start in the middle, just pull it out. Now this paper tape has tiny little holes in it, so that's how it works. But once you've dragged it across and bedded it, you can either leave it or put a little more mud on it. That's what I like to do. Just drag a nice thin layer over it. Then you just want to feather it out a little bit. There we go. 
Now we're going to let this dry for about 24 hours. Then we can come back and sand and do our next coat. So now you're going to want to take a sanding block uh, and you're going to want to use like 120 to 150 grit. And we're just going to start sanding over all the seams and the screw holes. And you're just going to want to feather these edges, the left and the right of the tape. And then we're going to come back and do our second coat and sand it once more so it'll be nice and smooth before we texture. Alright, so you're going to want to do about two to three coats over these uh, taped seams. And uh, after you sand that first one or second one, you're going to want to get a bigger knife each time when you're going over these seams. And the object is that you want to widen the seam a little each time you put a layer on. So that's why you want the knife bigger each time. You want about a 12 inch one when you're about to finish. But uh, So you're going to put more pressure down on the edges than in the middle where the tape is to feather it. So you're going to make that gradual transition. So that when you sand it all down, you won't be able to see that seam at all. Alright, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching Johnny DIY, guys. Keep on doing it yourself. Take care.